tournament poker players. Over $1 million in guarantees from April 10th through April 22nd during the Poker Atlas Tour at Texas Cardhouse Houston. 16 different poker tournaments, including the $50,000 guaranteed kickoff event, the $250,000 guaranteed mystery bounty, and the half a million dollar guaranteed main event. For all buy-ins, structures, and information, download the Poker Atlas app and visit texascardhouse.com today. Final table action. It's time for the 50K one day, the kickoff event of the Poker Atlas Tour. From a huge field and a massive prize pool, we've whittled it down to our final nine. Hello, everybody. I am Wes Tucker, and I am joined by the man, myth, and legend, the Justin Hammer. How are we doing, Justin? I don't think I'm a myth. I'm right here. Uh, <laughs> I'm, we... I'm doing good. How am I supposed to match that energy? You come in just so hot and on fire and loud and spectacular. <laughs> how am I, how am I going to even sit next to you for this entire stream? Huh? Well, let's find out. So we had a good one. A little over 360 entries into our one-day 50K kickoff event. And our final nine here truly put on a fantastic performance to get this far. And I'm looking forward to some fantastic tournament play. We do a lot of cash streams, but tournament poker is just a different animal entirely. Yeah, absolutely. I was there when they got to the final table. There was a bit of talk about uh, ICM chopping, uh, maybe ending it early. And there were a couple of them that said, no way. We've gone this far. We've gone through this many players. We'd like to play some poker for some uh, high stakes. So $300 buy-in. They're playing for almost $22,000. Uh, I I think there's a lot to uh, look forward to. That is correct. Let's take a quick look at the prize pool. First place, just under 22, like you said, 11,000 and change to second, but ninth place as well. You know, 6,400 bucks, not a bad day's work. Nearly twenty-two thousand dollars for first place. It's uh, for a three hundred dollar buy. -in. Seventy buy-ins for a one-day event. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely not a bad day's work. So we check in with the chip leader, Masuk King Six. No, thank you, sir. Or no. So one of the short stacks finds themselves a premium hand. Ace, Queen of Hearts, Christopher all in for 780000 And talking about Houston tournament poker legends, how about the almighty Chris Birchfield? Yeah, Chris Birchfield, uh, he is, you mentioned that name around these parts. He is definitely well known. Uh, Chris versus Christopher. They, they're they both two Chris's. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Christopher is the one that's all in. That's not... Right. Chris, Chris is the one with King Five. Birchfield has how many people named Chris are there on the stream? It was the T D was named Chris. The yeah. uh, players were named Chris. Oh boy. <laughs> we got a plethora of them. But the Chris on Chris crime is avoided as Birch will find the fold here. Blinds at thirty thousand, sixty thousand, sixty thousand. It's gonna cost our heroes hundred and fifty K in orbit to play. We look at the stacks here again. Masut still the chip leader, 2.425 million. Meanwhile, the six seat that is Jared, the short stack, the underdog at 215,000. Yeah, 60,000 big blind. He's got under 4,000, so definitely or under four bigs, not thousand, four bigs. Uh, definitely has some work to do. But you know what they say. Chip in a chair, he's got like lots of them, lots of chips. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now, depending on the chip values, you know, maybe a little give and take, but. Lots of physical chips, he's got lots of physical <laughs> chips. We check back in here. Cam, ace, six off center of the gun, no thank you, sir. And Angel we just saw on the uh, cash stream as well, had a dandy of a cash stream, ended up up over six grand. Oh, nice. Yeah. So wow. Check in now. Roland, king, 10 suited. He's going to bump it up. A couple of bigs. 120K to go. We get back to the chip leader, Masut, jack nine. 
And it looks like he wants to look him up. He'll defend his big blind, and off we go. Our first flop of the live stream. I love flops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's a 10 high board. Two hearts. The rolling top pair, second kicker. And if I'm not mistaken, Masuda ended up taking the chip lead with four tables left in the tournament and has not looked back since. Yeah, he was at a table uh, that was very active. They uh, were very good friends with the uh, waitresses that were here last night. They were very <laughs> active, having a lot of fun. And uh, he, I mean, somebody has to. Chips were flying at that table for some reason. Uh, they were flying, and he was the uh, beneficiary of many of them. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, he took that chip lead. Uh, I don't, I mean, I wasn't paying super close attention, but on all the updates, it looked like he never gave it up. No, I mean, he didn't relinquish it. Until, I mean, we got the final table. He still got the chip lead. I mean, this is his tournament to lose at this point coming yeah. into the final table. He's been on a dandy of a run. He is definitely doing a great job. He got there and uh, still hasn't looked back. He's, we'll see. We'll see if he ever does. But so far, he is doing pretty dang good. All right, Mr. Hammer, it's been a little less than a year. Your second stop with the Atlas Tour at TCH Houston. Yeah. Saw you made another couple stops right after us a yeah. year ago, yeah. including your first Vegas stop yeah. as well. So tell us about that. Uh, we went to Resorts World. It was a uh, great series. We were there for uh, 10 days. We would had an $800, uh, 300K guarantee main event that soared over on the last day. Of course. Uh, we actually did. We hit every guarantee for that tournament. Might be the first time in my career I've ever done it, but it was an awesome stop. Uh, Poker Atlas Tour really getting some momentum and super excited that TCH has been such a great partner so far uh, as we launch this tour and looking forward to many more stops at uh, all of the fabulous TCH properties here in Texas. All right, looking forward to it as we go heads up here. Kim with Ace Jack off suit. Christopher King Queen and 450K in the middle. The flop comes nine high. This is where the real poker begins. Both of our players with two overs to the board. Just checked on over to Christopher. And Christopher showing the stones. Gonna bet at it here. I talked to Chris a little bit right before they went to the final table. He was very excited about making this final table, very excited to be here and to learn more about the tour and TCH. He just seems like a legitimate poker fan who was, uh, I really like when people are in the moment, you know, they're at the final table and it's not just another day at the off office, it's a, uh, you know, unique experience. It's something that they are really trying to enjoy, and he just very much seemed like one of those people. I mean, it has someone who's dealt to him many times, including during the uh, event that you're watching now. You know, he's the kind of person that likes to sit back with the dealer, and they like to, they like to bounce hands off you. You like to say, well, should I have done this differently? Like, you see more hands than I do. Yeah, you know, tell it. me, what should I have done? Love it. We go to the turn. He'll bring a third heart to the board and pair the board with fives. Christopher does have the king of hearts in his back pocket. And he's got eight outs to boot. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Cam was a fixture in the last Atlas Tour stop here at Houston, including a final table appearance in the main event, the yeah, title event. He got a second place in the title event to uh, yeah. praise. Yeah, he went very deep you played very well obviously uh knows a lot about this game makes uh some really good decisions in these tournaments and uh yeah no no surprise at all to see him back at another final table as he checks it over yeah check back to the river we go looking for a king or a heart possibly a queen but no the board will pair nine so ace high will take it provided he's not bet out of it but again, the way this hand was played, I really don't see Cam getting bet out of this hand. Yeah, this is this is a spot where uh, the chips are in there. He's got uh, Chris has a little under. Yeah, Chris would have to call off for all of it. So it's one of those spots where uh, Cam might think he's bluffing here, but he's bluffing with the best hand. So. Oh, yeah. A value bluff. A value bluff, yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure in his mind he's thinking a lot of the uh, missed draws. He might be able to get to fold, maybe small pairs. But 
Uh, or maybe it is a double paired board, so maybe uh, he can get a call from some kings or queens, maybe. Oh, yeah. Definitely so. As we take a look here again, our final table of nine. Again, early goings, but we talk about the big difference between cash and tournament V pips. Again, the tournament V pip generally we see hovering around the 30 to 35 percenter area. Whereas we have cash games where we got 93 percenters, and I love it. It's good for TV, but not tournaments. 93 <laughs> percent. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. Uh, it's the cash games here have been great. I mean, this tournament's only been going for a couple of days uh, so far this time, but they uh, there were nine cash games going at one point yesterday while this tournament was going. At one in the morning. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, when I left here at. 3.30, 4 o'clock, whatever it was, there were still five cash games going, and there was action. I was looking at the games. PLO action is great. The No Limit action is great. Lots of 1-3-6s going on. It was, it was a good place to be for cash and for tournaments. Oh, yeah. Speaking of action, Jared finds a pocket pair, and he's all in. 215000 And Cam... One of the chip leaders at the table looking down at some Broadway cards. Yeah, the 215, like we said earlier, that's less. Oh, now the blinds have gone up even. Oh, yeah. Is, so less than three bigs. Uh, two, two Broadway cards in this spot. Pretty good. Pretty good spot to look him up. Oh, yeah. Does do so. See if anyone else decides to tag along. Angel with some middle connectors and... I think maybe can categorize this as a bit of a looser call, but he does have a little bit of wiggle room. Let's go. Yeah, he's probably doing the math and realizes it's not, it's less than two big lines for him to call, and it's one of those spots where you're not just uh, going up against another player, but you very likely might be in a spot where you check it down unless they have a really good hand. So maybe you just have to catch a pair by the river instead of on the flop or make a monster. Like he did, except he's also up against a bigger pair. But spots like this, I think sometimes they're thinking, uh, I'm not just going to get to see a cheap flop, but I might get to see a cheap river. And it's a relatively small investment. Very true. As we take a look here, open-ended now is Angel. And if there was ever a time to fire at a dry side pot, this is going to be it for Cam. does put Angel all in if he wants to try and keep drawing. Yeah. Not exactly a spot that I think Angel was hoping for. I think I'm sure he would have loved to see a free card, see oh, if he yeah. can't make that straight. But Cam trying to uh, not only get the ladder, but also make sure that he's the one who gets it and uh, not Jared. <laughs> Definitely so here. Again, calling off your tournament life on an open ender. You see 19%. If only he could see that number. Yeah. And I, he has to know that Cam is probably not bluffing here. Like you said, it is a it is a dry side pot. So bluff doesn't do a whole lot except get, uh, you know, get here at the chips. So Angel is trying to think. Is there any hand that he could beat, or is he getting the right price to try and get there if he's behind? I don't know. It doesn't feel like he's no. doing right, but I mean, I, I mean, if you think the right price to chase a draw is all your chips, I mean. <laughs> well, I do, but that's why they have I mean, me do commentary and run tournaments, yeah. and you don't ever see me playing at these. We should, we should play heads up more often. <laughs> <laughs> you should be so lucky. Can I see it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see. Come on, man. I'll tell you, no player is gonna feel worse about a bet like that than the one who's all in. He just has to sweat it at this point. Yeah, it's, it's tough. But at least you gotta feel like you got outs. If you got fours here, it's like, all right, probably no chance I'm ahead. But, you know, three or eight, probably live. Four is probably live. Just hope he doesn't have a hand like eight, nine. Or he does find the fold, so away we go now. One card to come. Jared's tournament life hanging in the balance. 
way here. Get the cars in the view. There we go. Turn out. Wow, Chris got that for us. Quick, turn out. <laughs> that is crispy and Chris, yeah. for sure. Bazinga. He tried. He oh, sure yeah. tried. So we have our first elimination as we will say goodnight to Jared. He finishes in ninth place. So blinds are 40, 80, 80. They did go up. And we're down to our Elite Eight. So elite Eight. That's right. Got to stick kind of with the theme of everything, you <laughs> yeah. know. It's still, it's still April, so March Madness makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love you, man. You keep me in check. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, uh, March Madness is leading more and more into April every single year. So it's like... Uh, the madness comes more in April than it does in March in the anyway. So it might, might into like April absurdity or something. April here. So, absurdity. Yeah, can't wait for that. <laughs> April is, how'd you do in your April absurdity bracket? Oh, I man. crushed. I crushed my AA bracket. Is absurdity with the A? Uh, uh, you know what? Yes. Yeah, absurdity with an A. Uh, <laughs> they don't ask me to do this for my spelling acumen. <laughs> no. Not even the teleprompter needs you to spell. You just got to read. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So King Jack here under the gun plus one. He's going to min click it. 160K to go. The Brunson for Kim. Angel can't do it either. Suited and connected for Birchfield, however. You know, having played alongside him, played opposite him, done streams with him playing on him, I can tell you there's really no comparing the personality of Chris Birchfield yeah. to a lot of tournament players. A lot of them, you know, stoic, quiet, but Birch will talk your ear off regardless of the situation. Yeah, he definitely had fun throughout this tournament. He, uh picked up many of the rounds that people were having at he was at the fun table should come as no surprise to anybody no. he was having a blast i don't think it was the fun table until chris sat down <laughs> it, <laughs> it became the fun table really quick but yeah having a good time this you know this is why you do a kickoff tournament like this it's uh 300 buy-in you know kind of mid to lower range for what the series is going to be and a uh, big guarantee one day event everyone gets loose gets ready for the big series that's coming up it served its purpose very well these guys had a really good time and i think it's going to set the tone for the rest of the series as you can see on that glorious sign right there oh yeah 16 events over the next 12 days 10 through the 22nd. Look at that sign just looks so good. It does. Absolutely. I wonder who's responsible for that. I don't know, oh, but whoever they are, they yeah. did it. So, some genius, there. maybe? Yeah. The, <laughs> other one, the other one on the other side. Probably somebody who doesn't know how to say uh, absurd, spell absurd. <laughs> uh, the one on the other side, uh, it's got a QR code. You want to scan it and get the Poker Atlas out. Uh, if, if you can come play these events, I highly recommend it, as we see a raise with Ace King suited here. Oh, yeah. Suit. The uh, run good continues. If you can get here, I recommend getting here. If you can't, download the Poker Atlas app and you can follow along. Uh, there's a chip count tab on the app where you can see how everyone's doing throughout the entire tournament. Uh, you can also go to uh, tchtournaments.com. There's lots of updates going on there. By Look, you can see Kirk right there in the background. There he is. Right on cue. Yep. Getting pictures and filming and reporting them all. Uh, check it out at TCH Tournaments. Yeah, the one person allowed to have their phone in the studio. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's how he gets the information to oh, yeah. everybody there, tchtournaments.com. Is that right? That is correct. Okay, good. <laughs> so the uh, Mystery Bounty Tournament, the Mystery Payday, kicked oh, yeah, off today. Yeah. Two flights. We sent five players into day two in the first flight. And if I'm not mistaken, Flight B is still rocking and rolling out there in the main car. Uh, right? Six, yeah. Six are going through. They got yep. 55 for the second flight, so... Uh, sending through 11. That one is uh, it's one of my favorites. You can 
double bag and you knock yourself out, so you get a bounty pull. So that's a good one to uh, play early, and if you bag, to play again and get yourself a min cash. You play the best stack. And Although, you know what? For this one time, I'll make an exception. If All you right. would like to play the lesser stack, if you bag twice and you would like to play the lesser stack, I'm going to let you do it. That's a very generous yes, offer. I'm you know, I mean, you, you can't you can't get deals like this in Vegas. It's, this is a Houston exclusive. This is a one-time <laughs> thing. I'm not ever going to do it again, so take advantage if you'd like to. If you bag twice, just this one tournament, I will let you play the lesser stack if you want to. But either way, I'm going to give you a bounty pull. You can start the day. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think the big bounty is going to be 25000 or so. Oh, so wow. You want to start right. your day with 25000 not a bad way to start your day. Uh, I, I'm going to ask whoever does it to tell me about it, but oh. I assume I assume it would be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be a pretty good one, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask him, too. But right there, Poker Atlas Tour. You can download the app right there. See what tournaments are coming up, not just for this series, but anywhere you are, anywhere you want to know what tournaments are, any tournaments that are running near you, you can check it out on the Poker Atlas app. It's an incredible tool. Oh, absolutely it is. So the first app I open when I wake up each morning. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I look, look around, see what's going on in the oh, rooms yeah. around me, see what's going on in Vegas, some of the clubs in California that we've been to recently. Oh, yeah. That we're going to soon. Uh oh, foreshadowing. Boy, hey, oh. We, got, uh, we got stops. Stops <laughs> on stops on stops coming up. The Poker Atlas Tour. At least once a month for the rest of the year, we'll have a stop somewhere. All right, but Christopher now ace ten. Their cam opened with ace five suited. The short stack finds a premium, and here's the call from Cam. So all in and at risk is Christopher. Yeah, couldn't have asked for a much better position as Cam truly dominated. Away we go, the flop, ace five, ace 10. A 10 and a five and on a the five. flop. Wow, it's like <laughs> you get to jump ahead, but I'm still here, yep. I'm still here. All I would need is a little five ball. Seven of hearts. So needing a five. And a five only? And a five only. And the tray of hearts comes through, and Christopher will find a double. Do you want to come back from a short stack, get the momentum going in the right direction? That's how you do it, 101. Two pretty cards is all it takes. <laughs> That's all it takes. Like we were talking about with Birchfield, he is just genuinely excited for every player at the table. They're all supposed to be enemies he's supposed to be wanting to ladder up but he is legitimately just rooting for everybody even if it costs him ladders and pay jumps he just wants everyone to win somehow So I do want to highlight an interesting tournament coming up, of course. You know, Houston Poker, we love our bomb pots. We love our reverse buttons. Yeah, so yeah. why not combine that with a tournament, Justin? Yeah, Tell us how that happens. That sounds like a great idea. So we, a lot of what happened, you know, Houston is kind of its own beast. It's got a, a lot of its own, uh, you know, rituals. It's got its own customs. It's got its own history. And uh, one of them is they uh, very much, every time a dealer sits down, you do a bomb pot and the reverse button is uh you know just kind of keeps it fair if you do it where the regular button is you know the same person could get it every single bomb pot mm -hmm. so it's pretty standard in cash games around here for there to be a reverse button so we you know we decided to make a tournament about it so this one uh instead of when the dealer pushes because we want it to be a little more consistent and not kind of uh on different levels or different times depending on what part of the string they're in on the push uh, it's going to be at the start of every level. They're going to do a bomb pot. It's going to have a reverse button. The ante is going to be the size of a small blind. And uh, otherwise, it's just going to be a normal No Limit Hold'em tournament. But we're kind of throwing in that little that little twist, that little thing that makes it unique. A little bit of Houston flavor, oh, yeah. if you will. Uh, and so that tournament's coming up. It's part of the series. We are... Uh, Looking forward to it. As we get another all in here. Here we go. All in and at risk. William with King Queen. Ace five. 
is all he has to overcome. That's it. Just a little ace. That's it. Easy. Ace five. He's ace five suited. That's like uh, that's what the kids are calling aces nowadays. That's what all these uh, salty say that you're supposed to do. A queen and a five on the flop. So king queen in good shape. 21% to catch up to the turn. Nine of club now adds the flush draw. So a five and only a five is what it's gonna take. To the river we go. Oh! Done. Oh. Wow. Utterly <laughs> sickening. <laughs> but William gonna be eliminated in eighth place after a rivered five. So tough. Sometimes this game is cool. Absolutely so. We bid good night to William, but still a fantastic show of force. And our remaining seven will do battle for just south of twenty-two thousand dollars. Yeah, a, a uh, getting eighth place out of three hundred and sixty entries on a three hundred dollar one day event that is nothing to scoff at. That no, nothing great, at all. Great accomplishment. It's gonna sting a little bit until you get to the uh, payout window. Then hopefully it goes. Oh, yeah. away a little bit. I mean, there, there's nothing a few thousand dollars in your hand can't fix. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Let's try it. I'm gonna, I'll try all the things. You yep. keep putting a few thousand on my hand. I'll all let right. you know when it stops working. All right. Let me get off the phone with my banker first. I mean, <laughs> after last time, I don't know if I can trust it. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep trying. <laughs> Looks like we're doing a quick little uh, color up here. Yeah, quick little race off. So let's take the opportunity here to talk a little bit more about what's going on. Oh, so too. a big change, of course, has been the Milestone satellites. Oh, yeah. So, of course, you know, everybody knows what a good old fashioned satellite is. You sure. put up uh, 10 to 15 percent of the buy in. You find your way into the big one for cheap. Yeah. But you got to outplay another tournament field to do so. Yeah. So the milestone, how about you just chip up a little bit and we'll give you the seat anyway. Yeah, the thing that uh, can be tough about satellites is they're about uh, surviving. They're more about not losing than they are about winning, typically. How long can you hold on? Can you last longer than everybody else? Which is fine. I mean, it's worked for a long time for us. What that does is it can drag on satellites. It mm -hmm. can reward stalling, which you don't ever really want to do. You want to encourage play you want to uh, you want to reward aggression you want to do things like that in satellites it's always been really tough to do but with these milestones uh you get your seat as soon as you uh get whatever multiplier you need on your chip so if it's a one in seven you seven x your stack you get your seat so you have to play instead of survive you got to win your seat instead of not losing and uh just what that does is uh it it speeds up those tournaments. It rewards aggression. It's, you have to win your seat instead of not lose it. And so we're doing some of those. Not all of them are going to be milestone. We're kind of uh, getting a feel for it for this series. But uh, here the runners go, and you can see they're kind of labeled on the on Pope Atlas and on the website and all the flyers and everything. But uh, we did one today, and it went really well. Players were very receptive to it. They liked it a lot. And uh, I think, honestly, it's going to be the wave of the future. It's going to be the way uh satellites are done moving forward and the win that's how they do all of their satellites now that was actually my next question is do you think that is the future of satellite poker but yeah i, mean, I do i honestly think it's good right, for everyone go. to kind of remold if you will the way that we look at the satellites and kind of turn them more into winning a seat instead of not losing it I mean, some of the most, uh, the longest and most intense bubbles I've ever been on were satellites, you know? Yeah. And it feels like it should be more pressure to win money than to win a seat. All of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. It's, it's, it. You get to a point where everyone in the tournament has less than five big blinds, and you're just trying to figure out who's going to hit the blind first and how good of a hand you need to have in order to get there. But people always talk about the moments where you're supposed to fold aces pre-flop. Mm -hmm. And well, why would we ever want to run a system where you're supposed to fold aces pre-flop? I, I mean, the best hand in poker. And we got to say, no, the way this is formatted, you're supposed to fold that. In a milestone, you know, you need. It doesn't right. matter if, if you're on the bubble, if you're close to a seat, you got to play those aces because you got to win your seat. So hold up here as Masood looks down at some suited connectors after Chris jams all in with Jack-10. So all in and at risk. 
is the mighty birch. Yeah, we let's see what it. happens here. We did it! Okay. He says we did it! <laughs> He's celebrating Three, already! One ain't gone. We did a fam! We did a fam! <laughs> He's a hard guy He's not to root for. <laughs> he says he already won. You don't even need to root or not. He thinks he already won. Jack on the flop. So a 10 ball would bring a straight in for Duke. I don't want to yeah, say it. Jack on the turn. Jack on the turn. Oh, no. Actually, he's going for a jack because that would, that would lock it up for him. The 8 gives a few more outs. Oh, yeah. Four outs to Masood as we go to the river. Birch doubles. We did it, fail. Nice <laughs> we did it, fam. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I'm no, the short stacks are running hot oh, so true. far. Yeah, yeah, so far, so good. Like, like, yeah. Take a look now at how everything is stacking up. The big stack now, 2.54 million. That puts Angel down there near the bottom, actually at the bottom with 780,000 as our blinds have gone up again. 50, yeah. 100, 100. This is my favorite really level because know. now I actually know how many blinds everybody has. Uh, Angel <laughs> has 7.8, Chris has 9.1, <laughs> Roland has 1.095, uh, or 10, sorry, 10.095. Uh, Chris has 1.6. You see how good I am at this? Oh, yeah. You can catch uh, Justin's new book, ICM for Dummies. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. No, uh, it, bookstores it, it's, it's called Big Blind at the 10 level. <laughs> by Justin Hammer. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. When it's, uh, yeah, when it's a thousand, it's even easier. There you go. Like, I, all you do is tick off three shows. Yeah. I mean, between that and my GTO sweat book, I think we're oh, going to be yeah, best yeah. selling authors oh, by the yeah. end of this you, year. You need yeah. a GTO sweat book. Oh, yeah. Houston. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, we've been doing sweats. Speaking of sweats, I know that's a perfect segue. Oh, yeah. As these guys, as that sharp looking guy in the pinstripes who does this color up. Oh, yeah. Uh, sweats okay. here in Houston, you know, you put up, it's kind of like a satellite. Yeah. Except, oh, yeah. So, we take out the most Sounds difficult good. part, all the Jackson. skill from it, and you just, <laughs> all you do is, get, oh, like, unless they've read your book, of course. Oh, absolutely, but, yes. There is a method to this madness. <laughs> generally, oh. all you do is you put up, uh, you know, a tenth of the buy-in, and you find nine other people who would like to do the same thing. And my math checks out. That's 100% of the buy-in. And uh, whoever wins gets a seat to whatever tournament you're playing for. Carry the one. Yeah, that adds up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. story <laughs> checks out. So a lot of uh, the people who actually played in this tournament won their way in through a sweat because we were doing those on breaks and before the tournament started and all of that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's a great way to get, uh, you know, scratch that gamble itch a little bit if you will, and also, you know, maybe get lucky and win your seat. And correct me if I'm wrong, but for every sweat that our members participate in, they're entered in a drawing to win a main event seat. That, that can't be right. These are break-free sweats. Let me, let me, How, let me read that get, script again. That, that sounds too good. Where to put somebody into a main event Man. if they're not taking anything from them? Yeah, it's that. almost like we care. You're, you're, you're <laughs> probably going to get fired. Hold on, I need to check. Oh, this boy. <laughs> Okay, it just came in from the top right now, actually. You are, in fact, correct. Rehired, not fired. Uh, welcome back. Good to have you. Uh, All right, good, good. Hope you, uh, hope you collected your unemployment. But <laughs> it, yes, in fact, every sweat you participate in, you get entered into a drawing. And they're going to give away one $1,100 title event seat. There you go. Uh, so how cool is that? If you don't win, you're still alive, like a second chance. There you go. For some people, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, it'll be lots of chances to get a free title event entry. Free title event entry. Gotta love it. So you could do a sweat. You could lose the sweat and win anyway. You could do a satellite, or you could buy right in. Lots of ways to play in the title event that's coming up next week. Eleven hundred dollar buy-in, five hundred thousand guaranteed. Five hundred thousand. Yes, I got to love it. But our final table here definitely been entertaining so far, and looking forward to seeing who we can crown as our first winner of this tour stop. Yeah, first one is uh. 
first one's good. Robin played. She won the first one last year when we were here. She and... did. If I'm not mistaken, she cashed in it as well this year. Did she not? I feel bad now because I don't know. I know oh, she, no. <laughs> uh, I know she played the satellite, so I thought that you couldn't be in the money and in the satellite. So I, okay. didn't, I didn't think so, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But she was here. She was happy to come back and try and defend her title. She had a great time. Oh, yeah. And I have this strange feeling we'll see her again. I have this very strange feeling as well. As do I. And, of course, you can see Atlas hanging out there on the little side table right over the shoulder of our next dealer there. I, I got to tell you, that's probably the best-looking trof trophy in poker. I right think now. that trophy is spectacular. Uh, it's, you know, hasn't been out there as long as some of these other ones, so I think people don't know about it yet. But there's a lot there's a lot going on with that little trophy. It's, uh, I'm happy to have it out there and for people to start figuring out, but everyone is custom made the bases to it i mean look here it looks like while trying to scan the cards one of purchase cards came face up what do you think the ruling is going to be here you know i think that we can't influence any action until action gets around at this point so let's see what happens here i, mean, I think the man in the suit knows what he's doing i yeah. think so too yeah i think so too <laughs> I also think with half of your hand exposed, it's going to be pretty easy to bet you off of it. Considering <laughs> the half that's exposed is a deuce. Yes. Yeah, that, yeah. uh... I mean... Yep, uh, eight deuce. Looks like the other one was an eight, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know... I like to say, uh, at least I like to think I've seen everything that could happen in a poker game. But you know, I, I see something new every week. At yeah. Least, you know. <laughs> right, in that, in that spot, like yeah, it sucks that the card got flipped up, but it's and obviously we're fairly confident that it just flipped over the way he said. But the problem is you can't really have a rule where if you flip your own card over that you get another one, especially when it's a deuce. A deuce yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, you give him an ace or another eight or a good card there maybe someone turns their hand into aces because of that the person who loses probably isn't going to be too happy about the fact that what seems to be their own mistake ends up rewarding them with the better hand and if they end up with uh, anything else it's just uh, you know feels like a pretty negative free roll for the person that they're up against but you won't ever actually know for sure whether or not, especially if you made the rule, you get another card. People might find ways to flip them over on purpose. So right. It's it's even when it's a mistake, it's still the player's responsibility to protect their own hand. And I still think to this day, whenever I'm working a floor shift, that's the biggest thing I hear about is failure to protect your own hand. Yeah. Leaving it out in front of your stack, dealer mucks it by accident. You know, mistakes like that happen. The dealer's trained to get uh, dead hands off the table. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's bound to happen at some point, whether you're prepared or not as a player. You just have to protect it. I mean, Exhibit A, we just saw it here on the stream. Yeah. And Chris has been playing majority of his life yeah. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> for a very long time he's been playing uh all day at this point oh, yeah. into the evening uh definitely definitely can happen to anyone no matter how comfortable you are with cards in your hand it's still pretty easy to make a mistake definitely so angel jack seven suited there's no thank you but chris find some suited connectors and into the chip leader, Jonas. Six fifty there. So Chris, all in. And King High. I mean, do you think that's enough hand to call with at this juncture of the tournament, Hammer? Uh, well, he has 5.6 bigs. Mm -hmm. uh, or, no. The bet, the bet was, was 5.5 bigs. Right. Yeah, so Chris was all in for that. So, uh, he, you know, King High, it's 5 is it's close, I think. I think when it's a... Uh, 
King Five is kind of a not attractive looking hand, well, even though there's a king in it. Uh, obviously, he's ahead of some of his range because he's ahead there. But yeah, I oh, let me throw this curveball at you. How about King Five suited? Ooh, Ooh. See, I suited. You had me at suited. Oh yeah, right. I thought so. I thought yeah, so. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. It's tough. You know how hard it is to get two cards with the same suit. Look, those ones aren't. Those oh, yeah. ones aren't. Look at all these hands that aren't suited. Look how easy it is to be not suited. <laughs> Exhibit A. Ace four off yeah, suit for Cam suited. here. Not suited. 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 Hey, here we go. Not Where suited. are you going? Not suited. See, it's just so tough that once you get there and you have a king, I mean, what if we're I only mean, human. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got to stick with that. So Cam continuing to trend back in the direction toward the chip lead. Again, Masut has fallen a little bit here. You know, Jonas has taken over the chip lead, a little over 2.5 million. But again, with the blind levels moving as fast as they are, again, these are not slow levels by any means, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah. And with the, it's costing our heroes, you know, a quarter million in orbit right now to play. Yeah. So it's only going to get worse. Speaking <laughs> of winning and not losing, that's exactly what you got to do here. You got to find your spot <laughs> and you got to go for it. Queen 10 here for Angel from the low jack. Does elect to wait for a better spot. It's a wise move. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, definitely a wise move as Christopher wakes up with Ace Jack, clubs and hearts, and here suited king. Suited king for Masood. King eight suited. Wow, that's. Oh yeah. Good hand. A suited Kate, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know what I would do. Oh yeah, it's hammer time. Yeah. Get it in there. You know how hard it is <laughs> to get a suited king. And oh. there we go. Masood is going to make the call. 200K, just a little min click. I oh, know. Three bets with King 8 suited. Hey, that sounds like a hammer move. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> see, that's where you get the chip lead. You see a hand like King 8 suited, you think to yourself, this is difficult. You put the chips in, and then you win the pot. It's just that Oh, easy. yeah. I think uh, we got a new Poker Atlas Tour shirt. It is difficult. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just with King 8 suited beneath it. There you go. Yeah, King 8 suited. <laughs> Pile. Pile them in. Yeah, these, these guys all know more about when to do that than I do. I, I can find an excuse to get chips in there and... Any spot, any game, any spot, any pot, get them in there. Speaking of getting them in there, Chris wakes up with the ladies. And oh my goodness, Mizzou, a suited ace. What do you do here? He just clicked back the king eight. 900 exactly. 900 exactly, he says. Yeah. We had a color up in the middle of the stream, so the uh, graphics are going to be off just a tad here. The the yeah. He will find the fold button there from the small blind, and well, Cam can't do anything with that, so Birch continuing to trend in the right direction. His stack now grows up to over a million. Yeah, and he looks like he showed the two queens. Sorry. Yeah. I'm very sorry. Well, I mean, really, I don't know what the damage is going to be in showing at this point. You're short stacked. You're not going to get it in bad. Yeah. So, I mean. <laughs> what is that stat? What is aggression frequency? Aggression frequency. You know what? The aggression frequency is supposed to be measuring three bets, four bets. But apparently, we aren't getting that metric. No, actually, it's a seven-way tie uh, oh, with 0%. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Because we, we totally didn't just see a three bet with King nope, 8 suited. Nope, yeah. you're mistaken. It's actually 0% <laughs> times seven, which is also equals 0%. Uh, and so sixes are what it's going to take for Roland to put his stack in, and he's not going to get any takers. Yeah, well, in one. for 8.45 big blinds there. There you go. And coming to a bookstore near you. 
That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Voluntarily put in pot. I know this one. There you go. That means the pip. Yes. Thank you. They are synonyms. Yes. <laughs> Voluntarily put in pop stands for VPIP. There you go. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, when you put chips in and you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about that a little with cash earlier. You know, the 93%. But <laughs> that sounds. You're, if you're doing that in a tournament, I mean, you're either rampage or you're uh, <laughs> yeah. just not winning. <laughs> And if you're doing that in a cash game, uh, seed open? Yes, yeah, seed open, exactly. 300K the raise with Ace Jack. And into Angel, who wakes up with sixes in the small blind. And he's all in. All in? And the call coming in from Jonas. So all in and at risk is Angel, sixes against Ace Jack. Off to the races. Classic coin flip, as oh, they yeah. say. Oh, yeah. 54, 46. Why do they say that? Classic, classic coin flip. Yeah, I always hear the classic races, Ace King against uh, Queens. But oh, is that the classic yeah, one? Yeah, that's oh, okay. a classic one for sure. But an ace on the flop I mean, went from classic coin flip to time to catch up fast. Yeah, six and only a six. To the river, and no good. So Angel will be eliminated in seventh place, and then there were six. Yep, the rich get richer. We have six players remaining. You see, you gotta love it though. Angel still all smiles. Yeah, all smiles. I mean, we're playing a game. Yeah, yeah. why not? You made a final table. <laughs> oh yeah. Top seven out of 361 entries. Get a few thousand bucks in your pocket off the three hundred dollar buy-in, like this. You can't win them all. Yeah, I can't imagine a better start to your morning. <laughs> I'm gonna try tomorrow when I wake up. I'm gonna see if I can't think of a better start. But all right. I got a feeling I won't be able to. A nice tall cup of coffee. Oh, oh, yeah. Sit down at the final table. You know, right after that. I think that'd be a pretty great way to start your day. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna try that tomorrow instead of coffee. Actually, let's see. <laughs> See what happens. Although I do like coffee. Oh, for sure. I can't think of anything more noble to go to war over than coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Tea? Tea? Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe call, call me as a reserve for that one. But <laughs> uh, Kim, ace six off suit, wasting no time, asserting dominance. Makes it 375K to go. Get back around to Masut in the cutoff with Jack-10. Yeah, he had called. He limped and then got raised. And it looks like he still wants to see the flop, so we'll go heads up to it. Two of the bigger stacks. Oh, yeah. And 8-8-4, eight, eight, so ace high. Looking good on the flop. Yeah, but I gotta tell you, the shorter stacks have gotta be loving this. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're saying I don't care what you have, you should go at it. Oh, yeah. Checks, check, check. Cam still ahead with Ace. The board Ooh. pairs twice. Ace high, way out in front. The suit with nine outs yeah, and can catch a boat on the board. Jack or a ten. The bet here from Ace High. Kim, see the sizing here. Does go for another 300,000. 300. Seems like it should end the hand right here. It does, doesn't it? But maybe I'm thinking about making a move here, making a play. Yeah, this would not be the best time to do so. I mean, if he's going to be making a move, Cam's going to think he's going to call to a chop at this point. Yeah, probably thinks he has an Ace. He does just call. Maybe, okay. he's, maybe he's got a plan here for the river. I have a plan for the river. How about a 10? <laughs> Maybe he plans to catch a 10. <laughs> there you go. He's got the best hand now here. Only is going to lose if Cam gets him to fold. Although he's stuck around on the turn. One of the best cards he could have caught there on the river. I do think that, I don't think the check was the best move there because he's going to just check to the chop at that point if he's thinking yeah. ace high. So Masood, I think, misses out on some value on that river, but still ends up coming away with a good size pot. That's going to propel him back into the chip lead, up yeah. over 3.2 million. 
That was a big pot. Maybe that was his. Maybe he had a plan, but then abandoned ship because he actually got there. Maybe, maybe he just felt it come. <laughs> Chris sounds shocked. Are you kidding me? My fucking god. <laughs> Chris is impressed. Definitely. It, it did feel like one of those things like, oh my god, here, now what do I do? Yeah. You know? <laughs> my fucking god. I, don't know what, I, don't know what I wouldn't be surprised if Chris is still going to be talking about that one tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think so. He sounds, he sounds pretty impressed with it. Yeah. King Queen for Cam. He's going to bump it up to 300K. We'll get no takers in the process. Again, don't count out a player as strong as Cam. I mean, yeah. we've seen him not only on Atlas Tour and was making great comebacks, but I mean, he's been playing a lot of the bigger events we do here. And yeah. He's just one of the toughest competitors. The last guy you want to double up is the exact words of tournament director Chris Hall. <laughs> the last <laughs> yeah. guy you want to double up. Yeah. He's a very solid player. Once he has the chips, he knows how to turn on the aggression. Uh, couldn't fade the uh, 10 on the river in that hand. No, not quite. But he did just take the blinds on there. He raised with the king queen. He got a round of blinds that back. That was. That helps. I mean, it is a testament to just how mature of a player he is. He didn't try to fire that river, though. Yeah. Yep. Probably figured uh, he... A lot of the calling hands should be aces or pairs that might call him down. And uh, there's ICM implications when you're playing against the other chip leader in the tournament. Not trying to uh, knock a player out. Or... Like some thievery there from Christopher. Yeah. Six. Okay. He doesn't always have to have a monster. He'll sneak in there every once in a while. Yeah. Ray's first in. Yes, sir. Nope. Oh, lines just went up. There we go. 75, 125, 125. 325K in orbit just for the privilege of sitting at this table. And a privilege it is. Oh, yeah. Definitely so. Yeah, I no longer have any idea how many blinds everyone has. It was a fun go. 20 minutes. We're going to have to wait for what, another five, six years till the next volume yeah, comes out. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be a while. But... All in, Chris. He finds an unsuited king to do it. Yeah, Chris is all in for uh, some amount of big blinds. It's, uh, <laughs> More than two, less than 50, I think. And I think that's a fair yeah, range. And the suit in the big blind again, just reclaim the chip lead. It'd be just about a third of his stack that he'd be calling off here if he's wrong. Yeah, and Chris is all in facing Masut and just can't stop complimenting him on the anti played no. <laughs> four hands ago. He shows the king. So you take a look now. After that hand, Mazut having to pay the blinds. That puts Jonas back into the chip lead. And Roland down there at the bottom. 845,000. And Christopher just in front of him at 1.2. Yeah. So everything the two Chris's, look, they're tied. They're tied with their names. They're tied with the uh, chip counts. It's like Destiny or something. The Chris's. <laughs> In between the four shorter stacks, the wealth is pretty evenly distributed. Yeah. It's everyone just uh, patiently waiting. And that's why. Yeah. <laughs> Found a spot. Gets a fist bump from uh, Chris. A suited Broadway holding for the chip leader. Queen, 10 in diamonds. Such a pretty looking hand. Does find the fold, very disciplined fold. 
very disciplined. I'll right? say. I'm seeing all these queens and diamonds going to the muck, but man, I, that looks too pretty for yeah, me. Absolutely. So, so pretty. As we take a look at the 0%. There we are again. Yeah. Aggression frequency. So, you know, PLO is Houston's game. Yeah, it so, is. So, do we have something coming up for our PLO crowd, Justin? We do. Oh. Yeah. We have a $600 PLO tournament that's coming up uh, a week from today, if I'm not mistaken. That oh. is correct. I'm going off the cuff here, guys. Uh, <laughs> $10,000 guaranteed for first place. It's a $600 buy-in. As Chris finds himself a pocket yeah. pair. I think we all know what's coming. Oh, it says under the gun, but I think he's in the line. Think we have some out of turn action. Um, Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, he I'm got sure a, it wouldn't happen there, but I mean. He got a walk. I'm, I think yeah. the graphic was off. Said under the gun, but he was. Yeah, because well, you gotta walk with us. Yeah. yeah. So nonetheless, we move on. Chris seems to be quite upset that he won that pot. I know. You know, I mean, there's just some players that you can't please. They'll win a hand and still be upset. <laughs> <laughs> with nines too, like it's for your tournament life. It's scary to get it in with an overcard. He, he just wants it. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to bust. He's upset. Nobody would do it. Yeah, it looks like they got it fixed now. There we go. Christopher, ace eight. And he moves all in with it. it looks like that's going to work. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Went all in for some... Number of big Some lines. Number I'm of sure. big lines. <laughs> it's, uh, I can tell you how many it would have been at the last level. Yeah, there you go. We look here. A little separation now between Chris and the rest of the shorter stacks after getting a walk with nines. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a disappointingly for yeah. him. <laughs> how dare they all fold to him in the blind? Uh, I know. Uh, you want to reach Valhalla soon enough, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my first impression of Chris. Is what uh, vi kind of Viking background are we dealing with here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think he drives a Harley, although his face would tell you otherwise. <laughs> <clears throat> and looky here, ten nine offsuit, nine. Hundred thousand. He's won the wager on it, and will not get the call from Jonas with King High. Mm -hmm. This is not an aggression factor set. No, definitely not. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to look at the camera when you uh, come through. We call that breaking the fourth wall. Uh, I know, but I'm a fan <laughs> of The Office. I like to break the fourth wall every once in a while. I think it can deliver a message. You know, it can uh, it can put emphasis on a statement if you break down the fourth wall every once in a while. Mm -hmm. The Office was an expert at that. I was just practicing my uh, gym look. Oh. There you go, okay, all right. See? Let me know when that callback comes through. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting. Not a lot of hand for Masood here, nor for Cam. Chris has got an ace, though. I think we all know what's coming here. Yep. All in, he all says. All in, suited connectors. No thank you. Christopher can't do it. Brunson would, but Christopher can't. Uh, yeah, Chris is blowing kisses. Dude. He's very great for everyone holding. Absolutely. You go all in with the A7. It's, uh, even if you're ahead, I think you're usually pretty fine just taking it down. Especially in a spot like this, where even picking up one round of blinds is so valuable. Yeah, especially when someone jams, just makes your decision so much easier with a oh, yeah. marginal hand like oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Why would we be 
You stop it. You stop it. <laughs> Still having a good time. Yeah. And you can double down with here for Cam. Not too much else. I'm trying to. Y'all just keep falling. My man. All in ace high. <laughs> An ace 10 for Christopher. A hey, suited king. We know what Hammer would do. Yeah, that get it in there. Pile. <laughs> Pile. I can tell you what I would not be doing. Thank you. The Masood will eject King High, and we have ourselves domination. Christopher leaps and bounds ahead as we go to the flop. Ace ten, ace nine. Ten in the window. That's that? usually a, not a great sign for Rowan. He's Gonna need some runners here. Running straight, nine nine. Oh, that's that ninety five. That ninety five is about to drop oh, down to eighty two percent. Oh my god! Yikes! Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Oh, he does a little victory dance. I think he needs to work on his Birchfield impression a little bit. Man. Yeah, that was. That, that dance was just abysmal so. compared to what we saw earlier. <laughs> ten in the window. Yeah, ten in the window for. Jump up to a 95% chance of winning. And then man, oh man. And that's going to leave Christopher with just over one big blind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we said it earlier. A chip and a chair. Chip and, yeah, and a he's, chair. He got 25k chips. Like six chips. So yeah. Six chips, still one chair. I mean, it could look intimidating if you stack it high enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough spot. I don't know if it's some kind of mental block, but everybody I talk to early in the tournament, we get to like the 400, 800, 800 levels. They are so hesitant to relinquish the black chips, the 100 chips, because I, I guess stack envy is a real thing, you know, when it comes to size. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, it makes your stack look so much bigger than it actually is. And then you get someone like me who comes around and just gives it down. This takes away all of our hopes and dreams. I... <laughs> I like efficiency. <laughs> Chris limps here. Oh, no, raises. Uh, he's going to bump it up a okay, little bit with Ace yeah. yeah. He knows there's a player behind know. with uh, one big blind. Or so. And, and uh, this weekend going to be a fun one. You know, Sunday, we got not one, two, three, four, but five tournaments rolling. That's too many. We should cancel. <laughs> well, which one would you like to cancel? None of them. Let's oh. roll them all. Let's add one, actually. Let, let's, let's do let's it. Let's see. Hold on. I'm going off the cuff again. We've got the Giants set. That is correct. Uh, that's going. I think that's a $400 buy-in. It is a $300 buy-in. Even better. Oh, well, then oh. I, I definitely didn't do 50K guarantee then. You definitely did. Oh, crap. Uh -oh. Okay. $300 buying, 50K guarantee. If you're listening, John, Justin, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry in advance. Hopefully, hopefully, I don't have to pay for any over there. Oh, man. Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. All in goes Cam. Oh Here comes God. a snap call from Rolo. Oh, man. Aces versus that. When you're sitting on one big blind. Ain't nothing you'd rather see than uh, ah. the big stack picking up aces against jacks. You might get a ladder here. Oh, yeah. Might get a ladder here with just a single big blind. No matter what happens, that was a great fold. King, five, yeah. four. Runner hearts possible for camp. Hearts. And now it's got to be a jack. Jack. Well, we've seen a 5%er come back oh, yeah. already not too long ago. At this time, though, and Cam will be eliminated in sixth place. Coming into Congrats final table second in chips, but <laughs> them's the draws. That, you know, these are, it is a faster tournament, so it's, it, things can change in the blink of an eye. Like it just did, I blinked and then it changed, so. Yep. And how about just laddering with one big blind? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty strong. Now he's sitting there saying, I hope there's aces versus jacks again. <laughs> Pick two people, give them aces and jacks. I mean, with watching six and a half big blinds turn into a pay jump, just like that. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. Man, hey. 
So, down to five, and that is going for our top prize of just south of $22,000. And looky here, looky here. Didn't he just have aces? No, I believe that was Roland who had aces. Didn't the table just have aces? They, that, that okay. is correct. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Christopher finds an ace, and he's all in. Masoot, a suited king. The hammerest of hammer hands. Yeah, that's right. That's, <laughs> how can you not? Along with the mighty ducks. All in. Yeah, he got two kings. He got sure. a three-way pot all of a sudden when we haven't even seen a flop without an all. Maybe one style table? He could come through with a 600k in his stack if he can last yeah, here, if he can catch an ace. Not a bad spot. Oh, yeah. And Jonas moves all in just to get everybody else out of the pot. Definitely don't want to be seeing yeah. more cards with this many players in the hand. No, the, uh, getting the chips and getting it heads up is more important than just forcing the ladder at this point. So it seems like the right move to me. Oh, picks up some all right. Five or an ace. And it's an eight board pairs, and Christopher will go out in fifth. He got that ladder though. That's, he did. that's pretty impressive. Two hundred extra dollars. Yeah. Well, we have reached our final four as final we're going. Four. I'm, just, I'm just gonna stick with the theme. Sticking you know? with the theme of yep. April absurdity. April absurdity. Right. Like, the, like the cliche goes, April absurdity. <laughs> You know, next year, if we don't have an April Absurdity Tournament in the Atlas Tour, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> we are going to have an April Absurdity <laughs> Tournament. It's going to be in the middle of May, <laughs> just like March Madness. <laughs> it's going to start May 3rd, the April Absurdity. <laughs> so when someone calls me on, I'm going to be like, you're right. That's insane. So we'll start it in March. <laughs> yep. Oh boy. April absurdity coming to you March 6th. March 6th. And we'll start this tournament at 7.07 .07 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> April absurdity. Suited and connected. Six, seven of clubs. Definitely a hand you want to see a flop, especially if they're going to let you limp here. Yeah. Uh, I'm just down here. Uh, Masood is going to lead into it. He did limp. That is a very uh, favorable flop for that range, I suppose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, last thing that uh, Giannis wants to do as a chip leader is get tangled up with Masood, second in chips at this point. So I definitely can see the ICM implications of that fold. Yeah, it's like, I mean, especially forehand and the pair of nines there is a monster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot easier when you can see uh, the cards like we can. Oh, yeah. Generally, that feels like a pretty safe All fold. in. All in, oh, he boy. says. Uh, he is not counting his chips, right? No, not quite. Do you want to swim together? Do you want to swim together? Come on, one card at a time. Oh, is that a call? <laughs> 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 Only the ace of spades. I, I don't know how that happens. Like, Only the ace of spades I've shown. Shows the ace. Uh, Let to know that was probably a pretty good fold there. Oh, yeah. He's definitely at this juncture. He's not going to put all his chips in the middle with nothing. I'm just trying to find my time. And there it is. <laughs> Strategy 101. Four players left. I mean, generally, when you get down to four or five players with the blind levels the way they're at now, this is when we start hearing whispers of oh, ICM. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean. They started before yeah. uh, the table got there. And I believe it was Chris who said he would rather just play. He's here for the experience. Oh, yeah. To get some. 
Like, for the fans. For the fans. Like the cameras and everything. You have to take that. I don't want them with their name. It's under cover. Under Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. I feel like the words do it for the vine have come out of Chris's <laughs> mouth more than a couple times in his life. <laughs> Back when that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. No one can accuse him of not having a good time. You had to put this up there. Preston on, Brady. Glad Shaggy can take a break from solving crimes yeah. <laughs> to play some poker. I love it. <laughs> Anyone can do it. He's Scooby Dooby Doo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a very good chance I'm going to win this one too. Hey, you said you were going to get fifth. No, I said four. 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 Guys. Oh, he said he was going to get fourth. Yes, yes, no. I'm getting fourth. I'm probably moving in this hand, and I'm probably busting. Like, yes. Like, I mean, let's, I'm telling let's see. <laughs> Just don't raise it. If it happens, I wish I could have talked to him the day before the lottery draw. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look at oh, that. my goodness. Oh. From oh, his man. mouth to God's ears. <laughs> I'm getting four. I have king eight. It does. It's tough. Look at Chris's king face. You just told him I had king eight. <laughs> <laughs> you did not have king eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to finish the eight four. And with that, we're going to have ourselves. Uh, looks like. You really it looks like Daryl's going to get one more hand in there. How am I going to get four? Dealer change on the horizon. And a big hello to everyone watching in Wyoming and wishing very good luck to Shaggy. Watching <laughs> from Wyoming. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks for joining us from Wyoming. Absolutely. <laughs> King five. Or a suit. No, I love that. Even if it's oh, not yeah. suited. At this point, I'm just ready to get it in. Well, let's see if Mazut's been studying the book. And he is going to make the call here. He's going heads up against Jack Seven. So King High out front after the flop. Two diamonds. Thinking about betting here? I think it's a good spot to do it. I think it definitely favors Mazut's calling range more. You know, any offsuit 10x holding. Ooh, lions a pair. Okay. Rolling in the lead now. My, how the tides have turned. Just a king for Mazut. Check silver, and now Roland going to bet at it. Like a one big blind bet, 150k. Yeah, now he's got the best hand. Why wouldn't you? Oh, correction, 175. Oh yeah. All right, right. yeah. yeah that's, that's, a little ahead of myself. Yeah, that's a huge. Is it drawing to seven percent? And look at this. He's going for a raise. <laughs> I'm not gonna let. I think we found where that copy of your book went. Yeah. It's, <laughs> oh. Wow. We'll get him to release the best hand. King five. He says, I don't fold jack ten. I don't fold king five. What is it? Nah. It's one fifty, right? All right. So the blinds now have gone up to oh, seventy-five, one fifty, one fifty. Glad you got one more. Oh yeah. And with that, we got a dealer change. And with a dealer change, you know what? No poker tour would be complete without Justin. I do not know what no poker tour would be complete without. Please tell me. A mixed triple draw tournament. 
Yeah, triple triple draw. You know, if only somebody would incorporate Ace to five, okay. Deuce to seven, and Badoogie. Whoa! That sounds like an awesome. That does sound like a great turn. I don't think I would play that for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Anything less than three hundred, and you better guarantee at least five thousand dollars. Otherwise, I am out. Yeah, I think five thousand is a good price pool. Yeah, you know, I think that'd be a good one. You know, five thousand. It's got to be worth my time. It's got to be worth so my time. At least. Do you know of anything like that coming no up anywhere? You know what? Anywhere around here? I heard a rumor that Tuesday, April sixteenth at two p.m. We're gonna have that same tournament we were just talking about for a five k guarantee. I don't believe you. That can't be for real. I, I mean, it's part of. What, like some sort of tour? I mean, uh, the rumor has it there's this pretty awesome uh, Poker Atlas tour at TCH Houston right now. Wow. I, I know. Stop it. Come on. All right, now that little technical difficulty there, but Chris going to take down a pot with Top Come Bear. On. But anyway, before our really bad SNL skit was interrupted. Yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. Surely you don't get a trophy for something like I, that. I mean, do you, Wes? You, it would be an incredible coincidence if there was something in Houston with the same specs we were talking about that you could win your own Atlas trophy. Oh, my gosh. I think that that's coming up here on the Poker Atlas Tour. No. Yes, on... Tuesday, April sixteenth. I was about to say that you interrupted. Me oh, there. I'm sorry, Tuesday, sorry. April sixteenth. Oh, it says pause for effect of the script. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Next Tuesday, triple triple draw. I, just, I actually played a triple draw at TCH in Dallas during the last series, and I don't want to brag, but uh, I technically, technically, I final tabled it, even though I busted right before the final table redraw. All right. Technically, <laughs> technically, I final tabled it because two of us busted. So. Uh, I got six, so. Uh, but it's a great tournament. If I could play it, I definitely would. A three hundred dollar buy-in, five k guarantee. Part of the we got a few mix events on this one, and uh, that one is definitely, definitely going to be one of the more fun ones. Triple, triple draw next Tuesday. Three hundred dollar buy-in, five k guarantee. So Jonas raising the action with a pair of trains. No, 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 no. Looks like it got through this time. So, ace nine from Duke in that hand. Yeah. Dude, on the button, too. Yeah. So, we're going to play a good old-fashioned game of knit or no knit. Mm. And I need the answer from our host, Justin Hammer. Well, uh, you know, that's... I, I don't know. I know I wouldn't be able to hold it. I don't I don't know if it's uh it feels like it feels pretty nitty, but you know what? He's the same guy who's finding spots to uh float with Jack Ten and raise with King High and uh he's had all the chips for a while and whatever he's doing seems to be working. So I think if he feels like he's in a spot where he's not gonna be able to get them to fold, he's just gonna wait for a better one. Like well, how about he's got this? two sixes, yeah. yeah. 450 goes three three blinds ace five suited oh what the what the young kids call aces nowadays ace five suited chris is thinking about it oh there oh, it is all in he puts him in this is a pretty wow jack 10 suited straight into the muck ace Sweet 10 in the so, muck wow we did it he didn't he, <laughs> he didn't did snap it, he, he didn't That's snap one, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I assume if you could see the cards, he would call, but two sixes here. Uh, there's a lot of hands that'll shove here that have you dominated, like sevens, eights, nines, tens. Uh, usually, it feels like your best case scenario is that you're flipping. Uh, this happens to be one of the spots where you're not, but like we said earlier, he... <laughs> He has made a lot of the right decisions. Yeah, he has. To get to this point, counting out his chips, trying to figure out how much he would have left. It's not a lot. No, it's it's not. This... Two bigs or so he would have left if he calls them loss. This could be the call of the tournament here. Yeah, whoever wins this is going to have a big chip lead. The first up was if not stone crawling. This is a five million chip pot. So, 
so many big blinds for whoever wins this hand. Let's see blood, Preston <laughs> says. I'm here for it. I am open to the idea. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's see blood. <laughs> What do you got? Do you have any clubs? That's why I, this is my birthright. Well, if that's the case, go fish. But <laughs> it's my birthright, he's saying. I assume he's talking about the trophy. Well, the trophy or a fourth place finish, which he already predicted. <laughs> he did predict uh, a fourth place. <laughs> uh, he's getting pretty fast and loose with the all ins for someone who had predicted fourth mm -hmm. place. I wish we could stop I'd buy you another one. Uh, looked like he was grabbing the shove there. Just doesn't want to let go of the hand. It's tough to win when you fold. Oh, here we go. Oh, there was some forward motion. Oh, what a balk. Yes. What All a right. Balk. What a balk, he says. All right, let's see. Two oh six and verse eight five of hearts. All right, away we go. All in and at risk is Chris for his already predicted fourth place finish. Yeah. Oh, away we go. Let's see if he was right. Queen, Jack, seven, sixes are good at the moment. One heart. King or ten for uh, additional outs. No, nope. looks like it's going to be eight. a. It's got to be an ace. Ace, ace only. <laughs> Got to be an ace, oh, and the six woo. will give him a six. set on the river. Oh, Masut has eliminated Chris in fourth place, as the Oracle predicted. Yeah, as the Oracle predicted. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe next time, uh, predict yourself winning this. Thing. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, you you're familiar with the concept of self fulfilling prophecies. Uh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's what I say. We will hit you. <laughs> So Chris is out in fourth place. We're down to our final three. And with the blinds where they are now, it's still costing our heroes 375,000 in orbit. And those orbits are going to be coming pretty quick three-handed. Three-handed, yeah. They, Chris walks over to get his payout. And I heard those three magic letters. Uh-oh. It's like a tingling to the ears of every TD. I see him. What? Yeah. yeah, we'll take a look at that. Uh-oh. I have to come and do math? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, let's see. Well, I think that pinstripe suit, let's be a real question. I mean, that is the suit of somebody who's good at calculating ICM. Yeah, you know? through a calculator. They, they will not sell that suit to anybody without <laughs> taking a test. No, absolutely not. Yeah, we, we do a deal that ends the term. There's a whole section of men's warehouse I'm not allowed into because <laughs> I can't do ICM this fast. <laughs> <laughs> that story checks out. I mean, that makes oh, a yeah. lot of sense. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to count up these chips. We're going to see... What do you think? What do you think happens here? Well, I think that given the stack sizes, you know, everybody at that point, Masut's got a commanding lead yep. over the last couple. Mm -hmm. yep. I do think that with the blinds where they're at now and knowing, well, two of the three players of the play table very well in their play styles, I do think that this is going to wind up in an ICM deal. Yeah. I think Masut will take the lion's share of everything. And I think he's going to take home an Atlas trophy tonight. That would be uh, that would be fortunate for him. Oh, yeah. Anyone lucky enough to be able to do such a thing. Kurt comes over to support on it. Do you want to get like I want to give an MVP in the chat award to Preston Brady as he comes with would have won it too if it weren't for those meddling kids. Meddling kids. <laughs> <laughs> we are stinking. like zoinks. Preston, without a doubt, you are the chat MVP tonight, my yeah, friend. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you win three, three Scooby Snacks. Yes, absolutely. Three Scooby Snacks. Zoinks. We just wait here again. Let's. We got a little bit of a pause in the action here. 
So again, with someone who's a big fan of all the mixed games, yeah. is there any way that I could play the game of my choice when the button is mine? You know, that's a pretty tall ask. But since you asked so nicely, I think we... I think we could pull off... <laughs> Uh, dealer's Choice Tournament. A Dealer's Choice Tournament? Yeah. How would that work? Uh, well, I believe that's also a 300 dollars volume, 5K guarantee. You would be correct. Uh, we've got a list of, uh, I think about 15 games. 15? Okay. Maybe more, maybe 18 games. Uh, the list is available if you look at the structure. It's on uh, TCH Tournament. It's also on Poker Atlas Tour dot com uh but you can see a list of all the games but yeah we're gonna play roughly six hands of each game and you when it's your turn to pick you can pick whatever game you want out of that list and then that's what everyone has to play until the button makes one full revolution it's one of the funnest games to kind of learn some of the new games uh hone your skills on the game if you already know them and it's a great thing to do right before the you know the world series and the summer schedule gets here uh, if you want to play, you know, more my range type of games, you know, the like four to six hundred type uh, mixed games. Yeah, I didn't know we had high stakes go fish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that's more the game that I'm qualified for, not the one that I enjoy. Uh, but uh, yeah, or if you're someone who's going to be firing bracelet events, you just want to, you know, get your uh, feet wet a little bit. It's a, it's a great, great place to do that. Well, let's listen in here, see if we can get an idea of what's going on. Looks like Masut's agreed to the numbers. We got a handshake going already. And give us a second. We're going to have to put the numbers in the computer. Give us a second. Give us a second. Give us a second. All right. Looks like we have a deal. Mr. Hammer. We have reached a deal. Well, he, Look. he got confused when he started give me a second. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I'm going to go get those numbers ready for everybody. Get them bid out. They did make an ICM deal. So it looks like it went 3 2 1 in the order of the seats that they're receiving in. Uh, Masut's going to. Win the tournament. Giannis gets second place and Roland gets third place, but they were all very close. Very, very close indeed, yes. But and considering they all got at least second place money, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, it's a little over 16 grand that Masut is going to be taking home yeah. for his first place finish as well as the coveted Atlas Trophy. It's almost against my own best interest to put it on the table before the tournament's done because then everybody was like, oh, I get one of those. This is like, what I'm playing for? Yeah, once you see it, <laughs> it's so close. People just really want to go for it because it is so glorious. All right. So beautiful. Well, you know, I think that's about all the time we have tonight, Justin, but a great final table. Congratulations to Masoo and one event in the books. One event down, 15, 15 to, to go. go. Yeah, we got like, that's about how many bits we have about the tournament. There we, we go. All so, right. So Surprised we weren't taken off the air sooner because of them. <laughs> but until then, from all of us at Texas Card House, Poker Atlas, and TCH Live, for my colleague Justin Hammer and the illustrious staff here at TCH Houston, I am Wes Tucker. We will 